hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review if you are back for a second or third time then welcome back if you are here for the first time then welcome tonight we are reviewing ready to love season three episode nine secrets and betrayals child i told y'all the resort was what we needed didn't i tell y'all it was gonna give the judge you were supposed to give you heard me honey shout out to joelle <laughs> let's get into it as we get into it child so when the episode first opens up it picks up where we left off right liz and david still going back and forth you're a gentleman no i'm not you're a gentleman yes you are all this old kind of stuff right so then david lets her know that he's self-eliminating she was like well you didn't tell me and he was like liz will you allow me to leave with what i'm about to say and my reasons behind it your reasons behind it are that you felt punked when clarence didn't want to bring the strength down in the room okay you were upset about the fact that she kissed jason you still not over that x okay and so you're not ready to love those are the reasons okay so before you try to come up with something i'm gonna give you the reasons so liz was like you know what it's kind of like he's trying to quit before he's fired so then he's like liz so he leans in right he was like i wish you the best child he is petty she's like well this right here david is telling me that you're not ready to love he's like oh i'm ready to love you be blessed so as he's going out into the parking lot he's like please no questions no questions david the paparazzi are not chasing you you're in an empty strip mall you look crazy okay you look like the nutcracker you're acting a fool all up and through this empty strip mall parking lot you're gonna do this exit interview whether you want to or not <laughs> So then he turns around talking about, let me tell you something. I'm ready to love. She's ready to love. The show is ready to love. Okay, David, calm yourself down, child. He's like, I'm a man of God and I'm a man of integrity. And when I feel like the enemy is trying to come in, I'm trying to get in front of it. No, you're trying to get in front of an elimination. I knew you was petty. We see, I didn't know your petty was on this level, but I knew you were petty when you eliminated Stacy. Cause you were all too ready to let her go after she told everybody how you wanted their social security numbers, honey. That's what that we knew you were petty back then, but now you come with this foolery talking about you trying to get in front of the enemy. Child. Okay. Get behind thee, Satan. Child. I know Liz sitting over there thinking, thank God you blew it. I thank God I dodged a bullet. Honey. Shout out to Beyonce. Best thing you never had. Over on the other side, Alexis is dealing with another nut yet again. So she's like, um, yeah, so the ladies have decided, you know, that you're not ready to love, right? So then he said, I'm not going to lie. I lost a little respect. I thought you were, you know, smarter than that. Um, okay, so she's not the only one that eliminated you. I'm like, okay, so now she's looking at him kind of crazy. And she's like, see, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. He was like, well, that might have been condescending, but she's like, no, it's condescending all the time. And she's like, I'm not going to be with anybody that talks to me like that. Ron, you have showed your true Donkey Kong colors, okay? And then she was like, if he only knew I was, in, you know, agonizing over the fact of eliminating him. And so then he goes, so understanding that, nah, I went on a date yesterday and I kissed Amber yesterday. So at that point I was done anyway okay mike we'll see you later and i'm thinking to myself not amber child listen that was pathetic okay it was pathetic it was petty it was childish and this just proves why you're not ready to love and on top of that what kind of man tells a woman about another woman only to hurt her and then you told us last episode that you fight logically like a man Honey, if emotions were not fueling that elimination, I don't know what was. But she was still gracious, honey. She got up. She hugged him because I wouldn't touch him. Okay? But <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> I would have been like, you know what? <laughs> it's okay, honey. The fact that you went out on a day with Amber and you wanted to be over there and you talking about some things changed after that kiss, honey. Don't let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord split you. Don't come back around here no more, no more, honey. Adios, amigos. Then the men all meet up at the gentleman's lounge, right? AJ was like, yeah, it's getting scary. So Joel was like, yeah, I need to lock it down before I get eliminated. You heard me? Honey, that's all you care about is getting eliminated. It shined through and through throughout the episode. Okay. Instead of nephew Tommy addressing the elimination, okay, the little scary elimination, he comes in and talks about them going to a ranch. Okay, I knew it. I told y'all he was not going to talk about the elephant in the room. Okay, so Jason said, the women are like outnumbering the men. So I know it's because of Liz and Kyra. Because you know, he's choosing between two. And apparently so is AJ, right? 
So Joel and so then it's time to go to the ranch. Joel and KG arrive at the ranch. It's beautiful. I was like, okay, so why we couldn't start with this? I don't know if the budget called for a half a ranch. You know what I'm saying? We need to get like three episodes of the ranch and let them just freestyle the rest. I don't know what kind of KG budget y'all got, but I'm gonna need y'all next time to have them all in one place so that we can figure out what all's doing. So then Vernisha shows up looking cute. I like to have Vernisha, honey. So she comes in and she's like, I'm, I'm looking forward to spending time with Joel. Child, she came in hugging him for dear life and he hugging her with one hand. Oh my goodness, child. Till he almost fell over because I guess he was trying to hold on to her luggage or whatever. I'm not sure. And she's like, we never spent the night together, but now we gonna see what it's like to spend the night together. And I must say this, all of them were in very good spirits at this ranch, honey. It was like they were so excited to have one big sleepover. I cannot wait to see the behind the scenes at this reunion to see who was waddling, doing their winter waddle down the hallway. Y'all remember when winter from last uh, season was waddling down the hallway when she was going back and forth to Jay's room? Honey, I wonder who's going to be waddling this time, honey. Liz, let me find out. <laughs> let me find out, y'all. So Liz and Jason roll up. Liz got on her denim, denim, denim. And, you know, she got a little ruffles on. She going to give her church lady if she don't do nothing. Else. So then Liz and Jason roll up and the girls are out. So, you know, Jason giving the those long lingering hugs because, you know, he like to touch and whatnot. So Amber and Kyra get there and they're playing Chip and Dale's outside with Joel and KG lifting up their shirts. So then First Lady Fly, she comes in hot, honey, saying she needs to speak to AJ. Bef she needs to speak to AJ before the ranch about Ron because he wasn't there for her. Girl, what kind of prescription medication are you on? Why would you be mad he's not there to hear you vent about another man that's eliminated who was your number one who was competition for him? You see how the crazy that sounds? Girl, if you don't sit down, honey, and change that wig. Oh, I'm so sick of that wig. It's starting to get crunchy. This episode, it didn't look as lively as it looked the other episodes. I was like, oh, child, honey, no, ma'am. That wig needs to be eliminated. That wig is not ready to look. <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. Y'all know I'm always acting a fool, honey. I'm just kidding, fly. In case you listen to this review, child, I'm just playing with you. So she's like, and I also want to confront Amber. Mm, honey, Amber was lurking and throwing bombs, honey, and blowing up people's spot and then going over there and eating with KG and then blowing up somebody else's spot and then going over there. Child, this was a mess. So anyway, she's like, I got some things I need to say to Amber as well. If I were Amber, I would, you know, not even entertain anything that you're saying because we're on a dating show. You don't stake no claims on nobody, child. Amber and KG over there talking, honey, probably talking about how they're going to split the rent or whatever. Kyra is asking Vernicia about Joel, right? Kyra, you need to be asked some questions. You know what I noticed about Kyra this um, episode? She doesn't give what's supposed to be given. I mean, she's pretty, don't get me wrong. She has a nice body and everything, but that personality is not personality in. It's not doing nothing. I mean, it's like almost like a bore. And I'm just sitting there looking at her. And I was I was thinking actually that Amber was gonna have the personality that Kyra has. But actually Kyra has the personality that I thought Amber was gonna have. So it's kinda it's kinda weird to me. I'm I'm very confused on it, but Okay, child, we'll get into that as we get into it. So she's asking her about Joel. She's like, um, yeah, I'm secure. You know, he makes me feel like I'm the only one. Child, are we watching the same show? So Amber said, well, Ron, this is Amber and her confessional. Well, Ron told me that her, that um, Joel chose Kyra. Child, and I was thinking, oh, Lord, please do not front this lady out in front of everybody. So then Joel was like, yeah, I'm secure. They was asking him if he's secure. He's like, yeah, I'm secure with, with my number one, which is Vernicia. So they were like, who is that? He was like, Vernicia. Child, these men are a compost heap at this point. You can't trust none of them, honey. About the only one that's decent I'm seeing is KG. Child, I mean, even Jason a little questionable on some days. Because sometimes I think he puts on, he gives a little extra when he sees, you know, that Liz is showing a little bit of body, but when she was cloth, you know, with her cape, he didn't want to be bothered, honey, cornhole it was. So anyway, Vernicia said, um, she's like, I think Vernicia should be privy to this information, right? 
So Amber said, was Kyra your number one? He said, hold up, baby. This is him and his confessional. I'm supposed to tell her that. Who the hell told her that any goddamn way? Oh, now he cussing, honey. Oh, he bourbon street mad. Oh, child. Don't get mad, honey. You said it. So go ahead and speak your speech. This is what you wanted. You said Kyra was your number one on some petty boots bullshit. And now Amber has brought it out. And now you mad because she said something. This is my thing for you, though, Amber. You should have pulled Vernicia to the side because that was quite embarrassing. First of all, you already know that this lady goes to bed for him each and every time that y'all go into elimination. She's like, Joel, 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 Joel. Even when y'all went over there and let Seagram's make y'all drink Seagram's, she was saying Joel. Okay, so you should have given her the common courtesy to pull her to the side. Amber, I ain't like that, girl. I did not like that. So he explains himself and he's like, yeah, I said Kyra. And Vernicia said, you, I can't believe this. Like, and she was so embarrassed. Oh, that was just a mess. So he said, the fact that I'm telling you, she said, but you didn't tell me before this. He said, that's not important. Um, it is. Okay. Because if you're saying that she's your number one and she's thinking she's your number one, since y'all go in numerical order, then I'm thinking that's something important for her to know. Like that's not something you just say all willy nilly and then act like it's no big deal. But Vernicia, you also should have spread your wings. I don't know who else here you would have probably connected with. I mean, maybe AJ, I'm just thinking about who you would look nice with aesthetically i don't know exactly who i don't feel like none of y'all match to be honest i feel like it's just a bunch of people thrown in the room honey and y'all fending for yourselves honey may the last but the best man win that's how i feel about this so he's explaining it to her she's upset right so joelle said you know we got into it i did say kyra so every time you get mad you just gonna say somebody else's name or it's on to the next i'm not understanding this you can't be trusted honey you cannot be trusted. You don't communicate well. That accent is really getting on my nerves at this point. You heard me. And on top of that, you're gaslighting her, talking in circles, trying to make it like it's her fault. I don't like it. So Vernicia said, you know, we're going to have plenty of disagreements because he was saying, you know, because of the disagreement, this is why this happened. And she was like, well, we're going to have plenty of disagreements. I'm, I'm thinking every time I get mad at you you gonna skip to my loop with somebody else honey y'all know she didn't say skip to my loop but y'all know I like to zhuzh it up and I'm thinking I'm with you Vernicia that's what I'm assuming every time that you get mad you're just gonna move on to the next and this is the thing let's say he gets mad before he goes to work are you gonna cheat on me while you're at work are you gonna talk to the girl at the gas station now's your chance to get her number over on pump number six like Joel uh-uh nope 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 and then, uh, you know, she's just saying what she needs to say, honey, speaking her speech. But it does make her look dumb because she's been riding for him. So the ladies are outside and there's this beeping noise, right? Beep, 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 beep. Now we all know it's a car, but Vernicia's like, who is that? What is that? Girl, just calm down, honey. Child, the Seagram's bartender is stalking them. They are now here yet again. You know what? Seagram's this season of Ready to Love is worse than Doritos and Ciroc over on Versus. Child, they're going to get their product placement. They're going to do their commercials. Child, you're going to know that Seagram is in the building, okay? So as they're getting drinks, Joelle pulls one of those F-boy moves, okay, and pulls her to the side. She's like, yeah, he pulled up on me, but, you know, he always does that. Every time he's around me, he can't help but touch me. Girl, that's how men do. Men do that with anybody, honey. That doesn't make any... Okay, Vernicia, child. You too old not to know that. Plus, he knows nobody else in here is for him. Kyra over there interrogating the girls per her law degree. Okay, like, why are you always asking all these questions? They need to be interrogating you. So all the girls are sitting down. Kyra's asking questions, asking the girls what they hope to get out of it, right? So Vernicia looks at Amber and she says, clarity. <laughs> I need some clarity. So Kyra was like, um, yeah, I don't know what who I'm going to choose or what I'm going to get out of it. Get out of it. Kyra never has a choice made. She has been literally skating by every single elimination, every single episode without making a choice. Now, of course, she has casted her net, you know, in several ponds because Kyra was checking on the boys when we had this winter storm down here in Texas. So she was like, let me call them and make sure they ain't shivering over there. Okay. Cause I'm gonna need to make it to the end. <laughs> So now all the men are thinking about Kyra because Kyra was thinking about them 
when we were all freezing to death. Okay. So Kyra said, you know, I just haven't really made a choice. She says she has her connection with Jason and it's the strongest. So she feels like Jason is it. Now I can say she has consistently said Jason for the past few episodes, which was kind of shocking to me because I really thought that she was going to go the route of AJ, but she's a little bit afraid of AJ and doesn't really quite know if he'll be that one that she's looking for. So I think Jason is more so a safety net. That's my assessment of it. So Jason is in the kitchen saying Kyra is a flip flopper, basically. And AJ said, you know, she needs to take accountability and be proactive. He said, listen, I showed her my latest deposit, honey, and she's still picking Jason. <laughs> like, well, what's she going to do? Child, I done showed her my bank statement and she's still choosing Jason. And I don't know how much more of this I can take. I don't think I can keep doing this. So we see Kyra, AJ, Liz and Jason. They go horseback riding on a double date. I thought that was cute. I was like, okay, this is cute. Horseback riding, getting to know each other. But it was kind of awkward because, you know, Kyra is choosing between Jason and AJ. And Jason is choosing between Kyra and Liz. And child, AJ just hoping to stay afloat. Child, it was just really weird. So Liz's horse was over there getting his knuck if you buck on with her, honey. Tap dancing all over her feet. And Liz was like, oh my God, he stepped on my feet. But Liz kept her head up, even though the horse put his, his, uh, you know, big old horseshoe all up on her. She was like, you know what? This date was beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some of this stuff is just so funny to me, child. I find humor in everything. So she was like, this date was beautiful. It was a nice date. I thought it was a really nice date. But I also felt like those horses were riding too close to each other, honey. I feel like y'all need to be, y'all on separate dates. Although this is a double date, your horses need to have some distance in between. Liz and AJ, you should have fell back a little bit for whatever reason. I mean, Liz and Jason, y'all should have fell back a little bit. And AJ and Kyra should have gone up a little bit so that you can have a chance to connect with each other. Because I know you were ear hustling on what she was saying to AJ. I'm just saying, Jason, honey, I'm just saying. So, you know, that was how their date went. I thought it was really nice. And uh, it seems like Liz and Jason made an even bigger connection on this episode. Okay, so Joel said he needs to pull Vernicia to the side so he can fix it because she's his strongest connection. Mm hmm. He was like, and it's getting down to the wire. No, sir. You know that she likes you the most. So you're trying to fix it to stay to the end and get more camera time. Honey, I'm not buying it. So Vernicia said, you know, I feel like he owes me an apology. So then when she comes over, he's like, what's up? She's like, nothing. Honey, trying to play coy. No, I would say something is up. I'm pissed. Okay. I don't like the way that you tried to play me. Like you already know we had these discussions and we decided that it was me for you and you for me. Now I'm not saying you can't go on another date, but just let me know what's going on. Give me a heads up. Don't have me out here looking crazy in these streets. That's what you should have said. So she said, you know, I was blindsided because she'll be more classier than me, honey. A little bit classy based. Okay. <laughs> and he said, um, well, I was being truthful. She said, well, you were just going to throw me away over one disagreement. And she was like, when Tommy has asked us every time, I always say that you're my number one. She said, if you feel like Kyra is giving you what you need, then you need to pursue her. And a lot of people were saying she was being loud, but this is my thing. I just feel like she was so hurt mixed with you know embarrassment she was embarrassed and she was hurt all at the same time so I kind of understood her and so um you know a lot could argue she's talking too loud honey but she's looking foolish out here in these streets honey so speak your speech Vernisha, honey speak your speech okay you heard me and he's trying to make it her fault right by saying she can't get past this jammed up mess and she was like well we need to talk about what jammed it up baby they are passionately fighting honey I was looking for him to go in the bedroom in a few minutes, honey. That was a passionate fight. Vernicia walks out mad as hell. And she goes over to KG and Amber. Now, Amber done started all this mess. And now she's sitting outside catching some rays of sun with KG. You know, they like to suck up free air and whatnot. So she was like, you know, he said he won't own up to his wrongdoings. That's what's making me mad. So KG comes in asking if he isn't being 100 in his shortcomings, right? He's like, yeah, I am. He said, well, listen, that's not what she's saying. She thinks, you know, and so then he was like, she thinks I'm trying to wipe it all away. KG comes with the facts and talks sense into Joel, right? KG said, well, you better fix it because she's saying it's a wrap. It's a chicken wrap, a lettuce wrap, an avocado wrap, a head wrap. One of them bonnets Monique been talking about. Shut up, KG. <laughs> that boy said a chicken wrap. It's done. 
Honey, oh, KG, you got to love him, honey. You just got to love him. So Joelle said, I got to go fix it, you I got to find a way to get out of jail because Vernicia the one. She always been the one. You the one right now. Boy, shut up. Don't say it like you're doing her a favor. I don't trust it, honey, and I don't trust you. You're a non-communicator. You lie. You gaslight, honey. You can't be trusted. KG's so sweet, honey. He said, well, reassure her because she's hurt. Oh, KG, honey. You might not have a pot to piss in, but you are a sweet guy. I love it. So Jason puts the moves on Liz and takes her to see the land, right? They're sitting outside at night. And it was like a real nice scene. I was like, okay, I like this. That was a nice move, Jason. So Jason puts his leg on Liz because she says she's cold, right? She said, you putting that big old leg on me? Ugh. Oh, my goodness, Liz. Sometimes you just better seen than heard, honey. So my thing was this. She should have put her leg on him. Child, zhuzh it up, honey. Use your feminine wiles. I know you're not having sex and everything. You're abstaining from sex, but y'all doing all this kissing. So just drape your leg across his, honey, and he could pull you in close. That's how you get your physical touch on. Not him putting his big fire across you. So Jason said, you know, the vibe just feels right. Ooh, child, it was a nice little set. And I ain't gonna lie, honey, it was nice. So Liz asked if he could rub her feet, right? He said, I'll rub your feet. I'll touch your body, girl. Honey, we know you will, you little horn dog. Jason said, you know, in that moment, I completely forgot about AJ and Kyra. See, Jason is a flip-flopper. As soon as daybreak, he gonna be looking in Kyra's face and looking for a kiss. I do feel like he and Liz have a chemistry, but a match, I'm not all the way convinced. I'm just not all the way convinced yet. And I feel like Jason really needs to get himself together. I know he has two pretty girls vying for his attention and they want to be chose at the end of the day. But Jason, you go wherever the wind blows. When Liz puts her boobs out, you all over there. When, if somebody tells you that Liz looks like she's been playing tambourines and she just came from Bible study, then you over there with Kyra. Child, I don't have no time to play with you at all. Okay. Liz said, well, how do you feel? He said, I feel at peace. It's good for a woman to be a man's peace. Child, y'all ain't been through nothing. She ain't been moody yet. She hasn't been on her cycle, honey. No arguments. You not picking up the phone when she calls. She has not been hangry. Y'all ain't been through nothing. The bills ain't been past due. Child, really then. Talking about she your peace. Y'all go through some peaks and valleys first and see how peaceful she is. Now, don't get me wrong. Liz does seem like a peaceful young lady. But we got to go through something to get to those feelings. Y'all just moving so fast, honey. So Liz says, she's, you know, I appreciate you and your consistency, honey, especially after dealing with Jason. That's really what she wanted to say. He says, Liz, she says, Jason. I was like, what in the telenovela is happening, honey? And then he went in for that kiss and honey, you know, it was on and you know, he gonna grab that face child. But she seemed more into it this time. I said, oh, okay, Liz, honey, <laughs> let me find out, child. So go, they go back in. They all come in to eat food, looking like something. Okay, jo Joel, you did a little something here. While Vernicia over there chomping down, Joel asking for a kiss, trying to deflect. He's like, you know, I'm sorry. And I should have told you. She's like, um, you know, I get mad, but I usually don't stay mad for long. I get through things. I don't stay mad all day long. And I'm like, oh, Lord, honey, that that was too easy. He would have had to say a little bit more for me, but that's just me. Alexis over there smacking, acting like she never ate before, talking to um AJ, talking about, so where were you? I texted you. He said, I got the text late. Really? It just amazes me. Men don't ever get the text. Text him, I'm naked, and see how fast they get that. Child, I'm just so confused. I was talking about I didn't get the text. Okay. So she said, you know, I'm feeling really neglected. Girl, don't start that. Don't start hounding AJ since Ron is gone. A few episodes ago, Ron was a priestly king. Now AJ is neglecting you, girl. Anyway, and so AJ was like, you know, I'm tired of hashing things out. I'm trying. It's like y'all go through something every episode. And I'm trying to figure out why y'all going through so much and ain't doing nothing. Like, what are y'all going through? So Alexis says, you know, he's slow all the way down. Girl, you cannot have it both ways, Alexis. Now that Ron and his nervous tick is gone, you want AJ's undivided attention. I mean, I know y'all kissed and everything, but quiet as it's kept, Ron was really the person that you were really going after. So you cannot expect him to just drop all communication with Kyra and all feelings for anybody else and just focus solely on you. It doesn't work like that. She was like, you know, it just makes me feel like he's more into Kyra. Oh, Alexis is insecure. Cha, it's, it, that's just the bottom line. She's just insecure. 
it's no other way around it that's what i'm getting for this from this okay so then he's like you know i need alexis I, I need Alexis to just calm down because she needs a lot of reassurance and he doesn't want to be responsible for that, right? So Alexis was like, oh, I'm just still mad at him. So Alexis still huffing and puffing. Child, you need to go next because it's not happening. They decide to play truth or dare. And the, so here go Vernicia. And if you don't do it, you got to take a shot. It was at that moment that I realized that Vernicia just loud. <laughs> She goes loud and country. It's, I realized it right in that moment. I said, okay. I used to be like Vernicia, just hollering for no reason, honey. She just loud. So KG gets dared to rub Amber's feet, honey. So he rubbed her little feet or whatever. So Kyra dared Vernicia to kiss Joel for five seconds. Child, this was the most awkward. I was like, what in the stuck like glue is going on here, honey? Not y'all trying to have an adult seven minutes in heaven. Okay. <laughs> child those two lips were stuck together they didn't move they didn't put no tongue i don't know what was happening it was awkward af okay cringe about as cringe as that kiss that jason and liz shared under the moonlight anyway jason chooses truth right so vernicia asks well who are you feeling the most honey he quickly took a shot baby kyra was not feeling that because she just knew she was a shoe in okay liz and those boobs may be a threat child you might have to watch her AJ says he's stuck as far as Alexis and Kyra are concerned how does he feel about them and AJ said you know I'm stuck he said I they both have great qualities but I have the past with Kyra and we've been through some things but Alexis is new here go Alexis <laughs> and see that's how he melted my heart you know my heart melted just a little bit when he was saying that kind of stuff I'm like okay Alexis so Alexis asked Kyra about AJ. She said, you know, I'm reluctant. So then they asked about David, right? They said, Liz, tell us about what happened at the elimination. Now, I feel like this was a production plant because why all of a sudden y'all want to know about elimination? Yeah, we have never heard you converse over what happens at an elimination. All of a sudden y'all want to know about David. So Liz said straight up and Liz said, um, it was combative. Alexis said, uh, well, with Ron, it was the most disrespectful conversation I have ever had. She said he got very condescending. And one thing you not going to do is talk to me like that. That's what you not going to do. Child, was looking at her like, girl, you ain't going to bust a grape. Child, please. So then she says, um, then he tells me, and just so you know, I went on a date with Amber. Child, listen to me, y'all. Amber's face, y'all. I hollered at the way Amber was looking when she said that. It was like she got caught. KG, Amber might not be that trustworthy, honey. You might want to question her a little bit. KG was like, oh, really, honey? KG leaned back in that seat. I said, oh, my God. KG leaned back like, I know you fucking lying, baby. No, no, she not. So then she says, not only that, he said he kissed her. Child, KG looked like, what the? And then Amber said, I'm annoyed. Okay. Uh, she was like, you could have called me on the phone and told me this. You didn't have to tell me in front of everybody. No, ma'am. The same way you outed Joelle in front of Vernicia and made Vernicia embarrassed in front of everybody at this little round table is the same way that you should have been confronted for sneaking around with Ron and his list, honey. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, child. So she was like, listen, you were my friend. I called you. I talked to you about how I felt about Ron. We even prayed together. And now I'm looking at you like a Judas. Child, let me find out Amber got a Porsche spirit, honey. Let me find out she swimming in that lady's pool and going to run off with her husband, honey. Let me find out. Then KG says, well, you know we're going to have to talk about that. Well, KG, you might as well get to doing your daily affirmations over on the grass, honey, and have a good old conversation because Amber is so I creep. Yeah, I just keep it on the down low. Honey, she doing whatever she want to do, honey, and sing. Child, I cannot wait to hear Amber's rebuttal next episode and hear what she has to say about the fact that she was over there having a date with Ron that nobody even knew about. Child, this is getting good, honey. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly how y'all felt about this episode. I cannot wait to get into it as we get into it in the comment section. Also, don't forget that we will be having a live, our Saturday Night Live at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, where we will discuss all the mess. Please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.